the University of New Orleans for the past two seasons before retiring for a second time. Of course, he was the head coach at UNO from 1972 through 1985, and he led the privateers to a Division II College World Series and then a Division I College World Series, the first in Louisiana college baseball history. Worked for the Greater New Orleans Sports Foundation, was the executive director and COO for the New Orleans Zephyrs, chaired the NCAA Baseball Committee, very accomplished gentleman and proud to call him a friend. Please give a warm Ready New Orleans Sports Foundation quarterback club welcome to the Mace, Ron Mason. Thank you, Kenny. Um, I'd like to uh, congratulate the speakers, uh, particularly you coaches for all you do for young people. Um, I'd like to congratulate you, young man, for your academic prowess. You had a four point. Uh, I can relate to that. Uh, I had a four point. I had a one point my freshman year, sophomore year, junior year, and senior year. But uh, congratulations on what you're doing. You know, when Kenny called me, it's always, hey Mace, what are you doing? Can you help me? And then he goes into this, Mace, are you a good American? So what, what's this? Of course I'm a good American. And then he said, well, if you're a good American, then you believe in the Constitution of the United States. I said, Kenny, come on. Of course I do. He said, well, if you believe in the Constitution of the United States, then you believe in free speech. I said, yes, I do. He said, well, I want you to give one to the quarterback. Club. <laughs> so that's why I'm here. I'd like to thank the Sports Foundation uh, for the merger with the uh, Touchdown Club. I think it's the best merger since uh, Bobby Jindal on Common Core. <laughs> um, Jay Cicero uh, was here, but, uh, oh, there's Jay. Uh, Jay, you know, Jay was the uh, general manager for the Zephyrs. He was our first uh, uh, ma general manager out of UNO. And, uh, you know, I tried to get information on Jay, what kind of a player he was in high school. But you know, he lived in Shreveport, and the stagecoach only leaves once a month. But once I got a hold of his coach, he said he was a low ball hitter and a high ball drinker. So that really tells you a lot about Jay Cicero. And I see the media extraordinaire here, Sam Joffrey. Sam's known as the Will Rogers of women's beach volleyball. He never miss a picture that he could take. <laughs> you know, when Kenny asked me to come, it's baseball time. And I know all you football players here, it's awesome. Uh, but this is an awesome time of the year. We've got the playoffs, and Ed Daniels is hiding out there. He doesn't want to come in because my Cubbies beat him. And, well, I mean, he's a Cardinal guy, too. We're struggling, but we're at Wrigley, and we're going to come back tonight. But when he asked me to come and speak a little bit about baseball, the first thing I thought of is, we've got a bona fide major leaguer here in the city. And so I called Johnny G. Vitella. Johnny started at Jesuit, led him to the 5A championship out at Zephyr Field, was an outstanding player at UNO, signed with the Kansas City Royals, had the opportunity to play in the big leagues two or three years part-time. This was his first full year with the California Angels. And so I asked Johnny to come out because I thought he could lend a little bit. We're going to have a little question and answer period. And uh, Johnny Givatella, come on up, Johnny. question I want to ask is, uh, it's got to be awesome, when you went to spring training this year, to walk in a clubhouse with Albert Pujols and uh, Mike Trout, what did that feel like? Uh, it was unbelievable. I mean, just watching those guys on TV, seeing how good they are, seeing um, what they've accomplished in the game, walking in that locker room was, was almost surreal. It was, it was uh, overwhelming at first, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of those guys didn't even talk to me, didn't know who I was. Uh, I was on field two, you know, not even on the main field practice with these guys. So I had a really an outside chance to make the team, uh, played well in spring training, made the team. And uh, it was in where they, you know, got to start talking to me a little bit, you know, developed a little bit of, uh, little, little bit of relationships. So it was, it was, it was quite a uh, ride for me. It was unbelievable meeting those guys. 
We see a lot in the series now with the playoffs. You know, we see uh, a lot of home runs, pitchers hitting the next hitter, uh, Bautista hitting a home run, standing there watching it flip the bat. What's your personal view and what's your angel view of a situation like that? Well, first of all, I'm, I'm a passionate person. I love when people play the game in a passionate way. Um, and I, I know that these guys play with emotion, they play with love for the game. I think it goes uh, too far at times. I think they kind of you know, show up uh, players on their team. I think Bautista is, is an unbelievable player. I think he went a little too far with the celebration of throwing the bat. I mean, I, obviously, it was in the heat of the moment. He didn't mean anything by it. But, um, you know, we have a lot of uh, young guys watching, uh, you know, us play and whatnot. And we've set examples for younger kids. So I think we have to do it the right way. And, and you know, playing again the right way helps them uh, see, the, see how it's supposed to be played. If he did that to your club, what would you do to him? We wouldn't be too happy about it. We would, we would try to get him back at some point in the game. Maybe <laughs> the next game. We would try to even the playing field. Your first full year, you hit uh, 272, which is outstanding. Who was the toughest pitcher in your mind? And that, you know, throughout not uh, the whole season, spring training, but just in your career. Uh, for me, we, we uh, play in the AL West, so we faced the Mariners a lot. I faced uh, King Felix probably five or six times um, throughout the year. And, I mean, he's unbelievable. Just a guy that really knows what he's doing on the mound, just has an unbelievable feel. He, he knows your swing. He, uh, he picks up tendencies very well, and, and he controls four or five different pitches for strikes. So anytime you have a guy with that kind of control, with that kind of command, and that kind of presence in the field, it, it makes him very difficult to hit. As a middle infielder, and most of you are watching on TV and they're talking about all the analytics, uh, all the shifts in uh, baseball. And as a middle infielder, what's your responsibility and how much does your club pay attention to all those? And what's the procedure you go through before the game to go over that information? Well, what's prevalent in the leagues right now is the amount of information that we have at our fingertips. We have um, players' tendencies, where they like to hit the ball, when in accounts like to pull the ball, when they kind of spread the ball in the opposite field. So before every game, we have a spray chart of where guys uh, like to hit the baseball. We have, got, we have um, recommendations where we should play players. Um, a lot of times, if a big lefty is up, I'll play in you know, kind of shallow right field. If a big pull hitter uh, is up from the, from the right side, I'll play him towards the other side of second base. Um, so we have, a lot of, we have a lot of information at our fingertips that we have to go through before games, playing guys the right way, just kind of playing the percentages of where guys might hit the baseball. Does anybody have any questions for Johnny? I'm sure there's a lot of people out there. How do you feel about the Royals? How do I feel about the Royals? I feel very strongly about them. I, mean, I know a lot of those guys personally. I played, um, you know, from low way to the with those guys. So, you know, uh, very close rapport with a lot of those players, and I know they're very hard uh, working guys. To see them uh, perform at a national stage like, that, like like what they're doing now is unbelievable. I'm very happy for them. I think they're gonna I think they're gonna make it to the World Series, obviously, and um, I think they have a good shot of winning. Johnny, I have a question here in the back. Are you worried about Mace if the Mets do indeed sweep the Cubs? <laughs> I don't think he's going to be too happy if, uh, if the Cubs get swept, especially going back to Chicago tonight. I know those fans are eager to, to see a championship go back to Chicago. Um, tonight's a big game for them. If they don't win tonight, they're going to be you know, really struggling for the series. So um, they need to get a win tonight, and, and I think they'll be in, in decent shape. Um, it's going to be tough to beat the Mets. The Mets have an unbelievable staff. They're playing really well right now, and um, they, they definitely have to work it out for them. He's not going to be as mad as at me as you are, the Cardinals aren't in it, so. Um, anybody else have a question? Going uh, into your second year now, and of course, football fans in here. Yeah, we got a lot of football fans. Um, going into your second year, I know Johnny came out all fall. Uh, last year and worked with us and worked with Ron Washington. Ron's a New Orleans native and uh, managed uh, the Texas Rangers. And uh, I know Johnny, he spent a lot of time with you defensively. Mm -hmm. How did that help you? Yeah, Ron Washington is, a, is an unbelievable um, baseball figure. He, he knows so much about the game. He's very passionate about the game. And I was able to meet him 
last year at a UNO function, talked to him a little bit. I didn't even realize he was a, a big defensive coach and a big defensive advocate. So uh, I talked to him, we met three times a week, and, and he really shored me up defensively, really um, took some kinks out of uh, what I was doing wrong, and, uh, and it really helped me out this year. And I'm very thankful for the, for the coach that he gave me. It kind of just ties into what these guys are doing, something that um, you know we take for granted as, as a young kid and, and as high school and college players, uh, how selfless these coaches are, just giving their time and energy to helping us out. And, and I didn't really appreciate it you know, when I'm coming up. But looking back, um, you know, I, I thank my coaches all the time for all the help that they gave me because I wouldn't be where I'm at today without them. So to the cap to you guys because it goes a long way. Anybody else? Yes, sir. How would you vertigo? How's what? You have vertigo. vertigo. I never, I, I never had vertigo. I had this. Uh, Whatever it was. I had this uh, nerve problem in the back of my eye that wasn't allowing my my eye to function right. So I missed a month of the season, but it cleared up. Uh, it was it was a scary situation for me, but um, I'm good now. Nobody else. Thank you. Thank you, Mason. I'm proud of John.